Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're looking at the MacBook Air M1 2020, and how this now five-year-old machine is still coping in 2025. With the revolutionary M1 chip, you probably won't be surprised. It's holding up very, very well. But first things first, let's go back to the design and style, which still used the same design originally as its pre predecessors MacBook Airs. There still isn't much to moan about with its sleek, wedge-like design. It looks very stylish still in 2025. With a 13-inch screen and lightweight, it's easy to carry around and use on the go. The Apple Smart Keyboard is both comfortable and also satisfying to use. The trackpad is responsive and accurate, and probably one of the best trackpads I've ever used on a laptop. Generally, a good-looking laptop. The one let down features of the MacBook Air M1 is that it only comes with two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, which isn't initially ideal. But generally, if you're needing to plug multiple devices into your lap computer, you'll be at home and will be worth investing in an adapter for port extensions or a docking station for a home desk. There are plenty of these around on the market, very much like this one I have here. I still probably won't say this is a massive letdown reason not to buy it. Using a dongle like this still isn't a deal breaker for me. But if it is for you, the newer models have a better selection of ports. But of course, you will have to pay for it. The ease and use of the software still makes this MacBook sleek with being able to run the newest updates for macOS Sequoia, which still runs reliably and fast with no issues with age and is still fully supported. I have also had no issue with application compatibility. As we know, Apple do start unsupporting models after so many years. Normally five years for being able to update to the newest software versions, and then after seven years for security updates. Obviously, this has deviated slightly over the years. This is the main average. However, the M1 silicon chip is a bit of a different one. They only stopped selling the M1 chip officially as a base model at the start of 2023. Even with the release of the M2 and the M3 chips. So we are unsure if they will still stick with their five years. We will have to wait and see. Or with the capability of the M1 chip, maybe they will allow these to run the newer systems for longer. Now let's talk about the M1 chip itself. This was a serious machine back in 2020. Apple basically incorporating what they had done with their phones and making a dedicated chip which incorporates all your CPU and GPU. This 8-core chip is a beast. Because this is all in one chip, in essence, it makes it easier for the CPU, GPU and other processor components to communicate faster. Meaning, they do not have to recopy the data between them and are being able to access the same data pool. This brings noticeable speed and efficiency improvements to this M1 chip making it outperform some of the beastie 16 inch MacBook Pros from the Intel era. Of course, over the years, Apple have now fine tuned these chips with the M2, 3 and 4, which are now so much more powerful. But for the average person, the M1 chip is still more than capable and so much more affordable. So capable, I still haven't upgraded mine. Just to note, my MacBook Air M1 is almost the base model with one slight difference. The RAM is the base with just 8GB, but I did upgrade to 512GB SSD, where the base model sits at 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD. When moving to this laptop back in 2020, I moved from a Windows laptop with 16GB of RAM. I didn't notice it to be any slower, even with multiple tabs and applications open. If anything, it was quicker. How Apple developed this machine to be so efficient with its RAM and to sip it like fine wine is outstanding. My previous laptop used to struggle playback on DaVinci Resolve, but with the same video content and settings, I failed to see any issues the same with most of the video editing I've done. This small, stylish laptop is a monster and can definitely cope with the majority of video and photo editing without any problems. Obviously, we're not talking about some serious 8K cinema video editing, but for most of us, it works. If you look further on YouTube, it has been done, and I have to say again, this MacBook Air still copes surprisingly well. My one thing would be, 
if you're looking to future-proof your computer or worried about the RAM usage in your line of work, it's worth spending the extra money initially as an investment for more RAM. As once you have bought it, there is no way of upgrading the RAM. The RAM has been soldered to the board. You would physically have to buy a new laptop and would be more expensive in the long run, unless you're good with your soldering skills. Now, we move on to storage. In my opinion, the upgrade to storage is expensive and finding a second-hand model with upgraded original storage is difficult due to people mainly buying the base models. But I think there's always ways to get around this storage issue. Don't get me wrong, with video editing, you need a lot of internal storage. But the easy workaround for this is using a good quality external SSD. These are a good investment and are pound for pound cheaper than upgrading the memory initially and as long as you go for a good SSD with fast read and write speeds, you'll be fine. So, in my opinion, I went bang in the middle of memory, so I can store certain programs on my MacBook, but apart from that, I will use an external SSD for video editing where I need fast read-write speeds, or other cloud storage options for documents so these don't clog up my internal storage. So, in a round off, I think these M1 chips have massively changed the way of laptops have moved forward and sprung to life in a revolutionary change to how Apple makes their laptops with silicon chips. From being back in 2020 when these M1 chips were new, they did outperform and keep up with some of the more aggressive, powerful Intel machines. Would I still recommend this as a purchase? In a simple answer, yes. I think these machines are still more than capable in 2025 and now very reasonably priced and more than capable for the everyday consumer. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Then please do consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment down below on your thoughts. And if you have an M1 laptop, or if you have an M1 MacBook, or considering still buying one in 2025. And I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>